I want to welcome you to week eight of a study in 1 Corinthians. And I want to take this time to thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us further the kingdom of God by sowing his word all over this planet through this podcast, through me going out and and preaching and teaching and, and encouraging people in what God has written down for them to live in, to live by, and that is his word. His word is the most important thing that a Christian will ever put into their hearts and into their lives and live in. Because those truths, God's truths that he has written down for us, strengthens us, helps us to realize and know and understand that that God is for us. And partners, you got a part in doing that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return over everything that you sow into God's kingdom. People don't realize how important it is, and that is to make sure that God's people, God's people know what they're doing, and that is know what they're doing when they give God's word away, sowing it, sowing it into this world, sowing it into other people. They are strengthening them. We're seeing lives changed through this podcast, through my ministry, and, and I thank God for that because he's the one that's given the increase, not me. He's the one that's growing this ministry, not me. But I thank God that he has put people in, in, in lockstep with me to, to walk with me and to, to help me be strong in God's word and to give it away all over this planet. We're giving God's word away to everyone that'll listen. And I thank God for that today. I want you to understand how important God's word is to the world that we live in. There's not a doubt in my mind, if it wasn't for God and what he has written down for me and you to live in and to live by, I'd have never made it as as far as I have. I'm 53 years old at the time of this recording, and I thank God every day that it it is his word that has brought me through, that has strengthened me and helped me to know and realize and understand that he has been for me my entire existence on this earth. I, and that is my determined desire to make sure that the world that we live in comes to that same conclusion, that God is for them. And he has written down everything that they will ever need to live in those truths, to live strong in him and what he has given us to believe. So thank you. Thank you, partners, for all that you do. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into God's kingdom. Don't forget, don't forget, download this phone app and make sure that you get what God has written down for you on a regular basis put straight to your phone so that you can live strong in him, in God's truth today. You know, Paul went out of the way to to strengthen us and lift us up and show us what God wanted to do in our lives through his grace and his love and his mercy. And and he done that here in these these Ephesians prayers and and went about went out of his way to help the Ephesians to to realize God's love for them to understand and be to for them to understand and be strong in that love, and and that's what it my desire is for the world that we live in. That the world come to realize and know that that God wants wants them to know that they that He loves them and He cares for them and and He wants more than anything to see them strong in Christ Jesus, their Lord and Savior. Ephesians one fifteen says, "Ever since I first heard." of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere. I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power 
for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church, and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he has opened my eyes to that love, that mercy, that grace, and yet that goodness. And I pray today that he opened yours. Let's see what, what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Touch my mind. Touch my mouth. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to be in uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 11 today. I'm going to read it. It says, For for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. The New Living Translation says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. The The Amplified Classic for 1 Corinthians 3 and 11 says, No other foundation can anyone lay than which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. I read these scriptures. Paul knew this, but I'm going to reinforce it today because Jesus said it himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. Okay, in saying that, he was proclaiming what Paul is, is, has set us up to, to build on today. He said, I'm the way. He said, I'm the one that you need to be looking to. And, and when Paul put it in this, in this uh, characteristic, this way of looking at it, Jesus was talking about it. He said, I'm the way. I'm the foundation. Build on me. I've said it over and over on this podcast that Jesus Christ is the door to the kingdom of God, the door that every man, woman, and child needs to come through. That's the only way in that to get into the kingdom of God and and live eternally in God's kingdom is through Christ Jesus and what he done. Now, we can, we can, I can, I can get out here and talk to a lot of people, and they're going to have different opinions about, about a lot of things in the Bible. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you something. I don't, I don't agree with everything that everybody says. You know, I, a, lot, a lot of times I'll go back and listen to things that I've said, and I'm like, I don't know if I, I really see that anymore. And because the, the Holy Spirit has, has guided me and got me to, to looking at stuff according to what he thinks, what his Spirit has told, told me, and what the Word says. 
when years ago, I didn't know any better. But what we were talking about yesterday, building on that foundation, God wants us to realize that. And the only foundation that we can uh, build upon is Christ Jesus. There's no other way to God except through him. And and there's a lot of people says, you know, I, I hear it a lot. I'm a good person. And that's great. That is great. There's there's nothing wrong with being a good person, and I'm not throwing off on that. But don't build your salvation on how good you are, how good, how many religious acts that you do in a, in a week's time, how much money you give to someone to to further the the the, uh, the ministry. No, that's not that's it. That's not it. Jesus Christ is our foundation, and he is sacrificed. Being born again is the most important thing that you'll ever do in your life. It, I'm telling you, I don't care what you, have, what you have done in your life. I've said it over and over again. You can make money like a billionaire, may become a billionaire in this world, and, and, and live to be a thousand years old if it was physically possible. And if you die without a relationship with God, if you die without Jesus Christ being Lord of your life, you have died, died. You have sold out short and died and fallen short to what God wanted for you. He wanted to bear you in to his family, but it was through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. It's not through how much money you that you can make and give away. That, that This is, this is I, I've got to say this because it's not how much I give to further God's kingdom. It's how much Jesus gave to give me God's kingdom. Jesus paid for it all. I can't pay. I, I can give everything away I've got away and never give up or, or never pay for what Jesus Christ done on the cross for each and every one of us. We can all get just, 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 I'm talking about just give everything we, we've got away to the, to the further of the kingdom of God and never pay for what God has done through Jesus Christ. You know, first Peter one, one and 18, I think it is. Let me re- go back and read it. I know it is, but I want to read it. I want, I want to put it before my eyes too, because I want you to, I want to get, I want you to get a hold of this because this is, this is what Jesus wanted us to understand. It's, it's him. It's what he has done. It's yes. First Peter one eighteen. for as much as you know, that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by traditions from your father, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, said Jesus paid it all through his sacrifice. He came and died on the cross for our sins. Paul wanted us to see this. He wanted us to know this because he came out from being a Pharisee. The law was a big deal. Rules and regulations and ceremonies were a big deal. But what did Paul say in the 11th verse? It says, For other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And I like to say, our Lord and Savior. I added to that. I'm going to tell you something. I don't think there's one thing wrong with adding my Lord and Savior. When somebody says, or when a scripture says Jesus Christ, and you say my Lord and Savior, it just reinforces what he has done in your life. And I want you to understand that, that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is our foundation. It is our foundation to our life. It is our strength, our victory, our, our overcoming power and, and, and knowledge and understanding to know, to know that we know. And, and Paul, said, Paul told us yesterday, he said, be careful what you, what you uh, build on that foundation. Because I'm telling you, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of religious junk, a lot of man's traditions that have, they have built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ that don't, no, don't belong there. It hinders the growth of the church. It hinders your growth. And when you, when you come to realize that, it's like, oh, my goodness. Why have I 
How, why have I uh, lived like this for so many as long as I have? And you just got to realize it and know that God wants more for you. He wants you to know and realize that you can live strong in Him. That's where for the reason we've been doing this 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 uh, this study since June the twenty first of two thousand twenty one for you to to get a I'm talking about a locked hold on it. Tie that rope around that thing and hold on to it. Why? Because it's the truth. You can you can rest in that truth. You can rest in what Jesus Christ has done for you and stand on that foundation. Build your life on it. Build your life on what God says. Build build your life on what Jesus Christ done. And when you do that, they ain't ain't a worry in the world for you. You don't, you you know, I was talking about that lady yesterday worrying her, you know, she, he said she worried about everything. And that just, that, that saddens my heart because for, for someone to worry like that, you know, it's, it's, it's sad. Because God said you don't have to. You don't need to. Cast it all on him, for he cares for you. And that's what I want to encourage you today to do. Salvation is easy. It's easy. But if you don't know what the Bible says about salvation and about what it entails, it can become a burden. A Christian life can become a hard thing. Your salvation can become a hard thing when you are not relying on what God's Word said, but but when you're relying on how good you are at that time in your life, it'll drag you down. That 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 discontent and 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 shame and condemnation that comes from making mistakes will drag you down, and and you'll run from God instead of running to Him. Don't do that ever again. Don't do that ever again. Know that you're born again. Know that that rock, that solid rock that is that was laid for you, and that is Jesus Christ and his sacrifice, it, it, it takes care of all sin. All you got to do, look, if you make a mistake, confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's First John 1 and 9, and that was written to the church. It was written to born-again people that needed to know what God had done in their life, needed to know that he was there to forgive them. All they had to do was confess it and run to him. Oh, I thank God for the truths of his word. I thank God for the foundation that I have built my life upon, that I have built this ministry upon, because this ministry is going forward seeing people's lives change, seeing them being strengthened in who they are in Jesus Christ and seeing others born again. Why? Because they finally figured out that God wasn't about all this religion. No, he was about the love and the mercy and the grace that Jesus Christ laid down when he laid down on the cross and died for their sins. Oh, I thank God. I thank God for that knowledge and revelation today. Now listen, are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ if you're Lord and Savior? First of all, I'm going to ask you, are you born again and you're just away from God? Because like I said, 1 John 1 and 9 says if you if you confess your sins, if you got sin in your life, confess it. Get it out of your life. Confess it to him. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. But if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, Make no mistake about it. Jesus has to be Lord of your life. You have to invite him in to be Lord of your life. I'm not talking about asking him to forgive you. I'm talking about asking him to be Lord of your life. Come into your heart and your life and, and, and forgive you. And, and, and he will. But the thing of it is, people beg God to forgive them for something they've done, but never you never see a change. They never repent of what they're doing. They never turn away from what they're doing. There's a big difference in religion and salvation. Salvation's easy. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you'll confess you, let me say, let me back up. Romans 10 and 9 said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, 
It says, you shall be saved. He says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. Come to him today. Invite him into your heart. Say, Lord, forgive me. Be be Lord of my life. Be Lord and Savior of my life. Change me. And then get in his word and allow his word to strengthen you and to lift you up and guide you and direct you into places that you that you thought you'd never go. Because I promise you, God will do that for you today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Now listen, go to our website, get in touch with us, download this podcast app, download this phone app and get these podcasts coming to your phone on a regular basis, six days a week, Monday or Sunday through through Friday every day we take Saturday off we take we take Saturday off and rest and 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 I don't expect I don't expect you to run uh, seven days a week God don't expect us to do it either so we take Saturday off and rest and we are about the father's business six days a week teaching people who they are in Jesus Christ get this phone app Find out what the Word says about you. Throw out all that religion and run, run, and that to Him. Be strengthened and by His Word. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, I've said it already, thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundred forward turn over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into His kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.